Hi, my name is Riley Sinclair, and I am a student at Oak Bay High in Miss Watson's grade 9 English class. This is my Aboriginal poetry project. I hope you enjoy. For my symbol poem, I chose to do the wolf. The wolf awakened with the moonlight, marking her presence with a howl that split the night in two. Her eyes gleamed gold like lanterns, a beacon in the darkness. As her paws padded silently through the dark forest, she searched for her pack. The wind rustled through her fur, and the soft thump of hooves caught her attention. On high alert, she paused, drinking in the night as she crouched down low. The darkness held its breath as her gaze settled in the bushes. A deer caught in the golden headlights of the wolf, and then she pounced. In this poem, I use similes and metaphors to highlight the theme of adventure in the wolf's life. For my emotion poem, I chose to write about the residential schools. I was trying to express the strength and the resilience that the kids had when their culture was being destroyed. In this poem, I used hyperboles and personification found in lines 1 and 4 to enhance the devastation that, the res that these residential schools caused. The strength. Though the nuns tried to crush their souls with stone-cold fists of faith, they couldn't. They were torn away from their homeland to a place built from gravestones, yet they danced on. They beat the spirit out of them, the very nature of their culture, but they never gave up. They broke some, bruising their minds and bodies to the point of no return, yet others fought on. They took the survivors and told them they were fundamentally wrong, wrong for just being who they were. Even the ones who lived on were never quite the same. Love. To love and to lose. Sometimes we don't get to choose. Love can save us all. Honesty. Lies can do damage. Honesty is a virtue. Be truthful to you. I chose love and honesty for my two grandfather teachings because I thought they resonated with me the most. I used assonance in the first haiku for my figure of speech. I chose to write my concrete poem about a cedar tree because I liked how it was associated with life. In this poem, I used a lot of hyperboles and personification. The cedar tree. Branches stretch towards the sky, spiraling towards the heaven they desire. Down below, roots weave into, down into the earth, building a foundation for the cedar tree. Birds hop singing through the leaves as a squirrel races up the trunk. At night, an owl carefully watches from the hollow, safe in the heart of the tree. For my last poem, the poem of my choice, I wrote a free verse about colors. I was trying to emphasize the importance of the colors and culture in our world. I use personification, descriptive language, and hyperboles to make the colors more like living things. The colors. All ends of the spectrum dance through our eyes. Could you picture the world in black and white? Evoking emotion through the power of sight. Could you picture the world in black and white? Rays of orange, pink, and violet light up the night. Could you picture a sunset in black and white? Light glances off a crystal, creating colorful rainbows. Could you picture the world in black and white? The colors light up the world, bringing joy and beauty. Could you picture your life in black and white? Thank you all for watching my presentation. Before I finish, I would like to thank Starla Anderson and Alex Nelson for sharing their experiences and inspiring my poetry. I would also like to thank Ms. Watson for giving us the opportunity to create this project. I hope you all enjoyed it.